What is great about mathematics is that often you don't have to wander far to stumble into problems which are too hard for anyone to solve. Some might seem innocent and in a way quite beautiful, but somehow await every attack at a solution. One of those problems, that you are seeing right now, was popularized by Matt Parker in one of his books and later in a Numberphile video. While Numberphile often talks about beautiful unsolved problems, usually you need a mathematics degree to even have the slightest chance of solving them. However, I want to revisit this specific problem since it turned out to have a hidden, simple solution, meaning it's quite understandable. In a way, for recreational mathematicians, a problem with a simple but hidden solution is sort of the dream, as it opens the door to actually making a contribution to mathematics. So let us explore this recently solved problem and see how we could have stumbled upon its solution. The best introduction to the mystery problem is the following question. Can you arrange the numbers from 1 to 15 in such a way that the sum of any two consecutive numbers is a square number? Let's see, we could start with 15. Next we could pick the 1, as their sum is 16, which is 4 times 4. Then we could pick 8, as 1 plus 8 is 9. And then um, we're stuck, there is no number we could pick next. Maybe we should have gone with 3 instead. Then maybe 6 and 10 and we're stuck again. Ok, now I've got it. Let's go with 1 first, then 15, 10, uh, yes this is looking very nice. Alright. Oh, so close, but we're missing the 8. But luckily the 8 fits perfectly in front. Phew. One way to illustrate that consecutive numbers have squares as sums is to animate it. Take for instance the part 12, 4, 5. Indeed, 12 plus 4 gives a perfect square, and so does 4 plus 5. And that's the animation you saw in the beginning. So the answer to our question is yes. We can arrange the numbers from 1 to 15 in that way. The same is true for 1 to 16, simply by adding 16 in the back, giving us a sum of 25. Also 17 is easy, as it fits in front, also with a sum of 25. However, it turns out that one cannot arrange the numbers from 1 to 18 to have this property. Does not matter how hard you try, the problem simply breaks at 18. Also, when adding 19 or then 20, the problem has no solution. Only when taking the first 23 numbers, there is again such a solution. And here it is. But for 1 to 24, it is again impossible. Now the great mystery, the problem no one could solve, was to find out for which n there exists such a sequence of the numbers from 1 to n which became known as the square sum problem. For small numbers, one can figure out by hand which are possible and which are not. As you can see, I picked the number 15 on purpose, as it is the smallest number with this property. So for some numbers it works, for others it doesn't. But somehow, all numbers, starting from 25, seem to have this property. So the square sum problem asks whether such a sequence always exists for every n greater than or equal to 25. Even though it seems to be true, we cannot be sure, like there could be some number, maybe in the millions or trillions, which suddenly fail a square sum property, which I have to admit would just be awesome. But frustratingly, we do not have any clear insight why such arrangements should always be possible. What is needed is a proof, a mathematical reason why such sequences always exist, with no exception and maybe even a way to construct them. So where to start? Maybe we should think practical and admit that the phrase sequence such that the sum of any two consecutive numbers is a square is simply too long. We don't have time for this. So let's just call such sequences regular. For instance, 4, 21, 15, 1 is a regular sequence, so is 3, 13, 3, 6 or 5, 11, minus 2. So for now we ignore that eventually we will only have to deal with positive numbers and also want them to appear once in a sequence. Now comes the first critical idea. As we saw in the beginning, finding regular sequences just by searching is tedious. What we would rather have is some way of using regular sequences that we already found to construct new or longer regular sequences. In other words, we search for ways to manipulate or transform a regular sequence that gives us a different one. Say I hand you any regular sequence. There are some ways we can construct a new regular sequence without having to do any trial and error. You now have exactly 5 seconds to pause if you want to find them for yourself. 
Otherwise, I will start with the first one. First, you could simply take any consecutive sums sequence, which is obviously regular again, as we haven't changed the consecutive sums. Not very clever and also boring, so this one will actually not be useful for us. Secondly, you could reverse the sequence. Unfortunately, still boring, but this will actually play a role for us, which brings us to the next two transformations. They are what our entire approach will rely on, as they don't just shuffle the existing numbers around. Without the following two ideas, we are doomed and our attempt does not stand a chance. So, the third insight is that if you multiply the whole sequence with any square number a squared, the resulting sequence is still regular. Why is this the case? Take for example the first sum, that is 12a squared plus 13a squared. As we started with a regular sequence, we know that 12 plus 13 is a square number, in our case 25, or 5 squared. Therefore, the new sum, which is 25a squared, can be written as 5a squared, and is therefore again some number squared. The same argument can be done for the next sum, and so on. And last, what happens when we add some constant to the first number? In order to ensure that the sum of the first two numbers stays a square, we can simply subtract the same constant from the second number. But then we have to add it to the third number, to ensure that the sum of the second and third number is unaffected. In total, if we add and subtract some constant on and on, the sequence stays regular. In particular, even the sums of the consecutive numbers are unaffected. The last three operators are worthy of getting their own name. If we call a sequence S, then we might write ref S as the reverse of S. Multiplying a sequence by a square number a squared, we can write as a squared s. As the last operator increases or decreases every number, we might call it the shift function and write shift sc, where c denotes the number that is added to the first entry of s, hence subtracted from the second, and so on. As we now have met our three protagonists, there is one additional fact that I want to highlight. Starting from a regular sequence, we can apply any of the above transformations to get a new one. But since this is again regular, we could then apply a different transformation and then another. The sums of consecutive numbers will always be square numbers. And I think we should point out that while we are just playing around with the problem, we have made a huge step towards its solution. Namely, we found some structure in the thing we want to explore and ways to manipulate it. In principle, we now have all the tools for solving the square sum problem. The rest is like a complicated puzzle, where we will try to make further and further progress. So let's just start with the sequence we had in the beginning and ask the question whether we can apply our transformations to get any closer to solving our problem, that is, create a new solution to the square sum problem. First of all, in order to get larger numbers, we might start by multiplying the sequence by 4, which is a square number 2 squared. Hence it gives us a new regular sequence of all multiples of 4 that are less than or equal to 60. But we already have a tool that can give us more than just the multiples of 4, namely the shift function. If we shift the sequence by 1, that is, add 1, subtract 1, on and on, we already have a variety of new numbers. Interestingly, we could have also shifted by minus 1, so starting with subtracting 1, which again gives us a new regular sequence. And feel free to check that here consecutive sums are indeed always square numbers. Even though we know it should work, I still get enjoyment from actually checking. So we can already package many numbers that are somewhere in between 1 and 60 into three regular sequences, even though they are sort of standalone rather than one continuous string. Crucially, we got an extra bonus that none of the new numbers appears more than once, which we know we will need eventually. However, this is the point where we encounter our first obstacle. Namely, as we took care of nearly every odd number up to 60, we only covered half the even ones. Sure, we have all multiples of 4, but other even numbers like 2, 6 and 10 are left out. Sure enough, one could simply shift the numbers by 2, right? Well, yeah, this will give us some of the numbers we are missing, but unfortunately, this time some of them appear more than once. For instance, we got 10 once from shifting 12 minus 2 and again from shifting 8 plus 2. Is this fixable if we shift by minus 2? Uh, no. Now other numbers appear more than once, while 10 does not show up anymore. What's going on? Why do these two shifted sequences behave nicely, but the last one won't, and is there a way we can fix it somehow? Well, the reason why shifting by plus or minus 1 does not yield any duplicate, while plus or minus 2 does, is explained visually. 
Let's take our sequence that was multiplied before and draw its numbers on the number line. What I'm going to do now is add the shifted sequence with plus 1 in blue. So some numbers get shifted up by 1 while others get shifted down. It is quite clear that so far we can't have any numbers more than once. Now let's add shift s minus 1. All the numbers that were shifted up by 1 get now shifted down. And note that there is just no way the two points end up on the same number. So what's the problem with shift s2? Let's watch. When numbers get shifted by 2, intersections can occur. This boils down to the fact that while every number can only be a distance 1 away from a single multiple of 4, it can be apart from two multiples of 4 by a distance of 2. Put differently, the problem is that 2 above a multiple of 4 is 2 below a multiple of 4. However, this problem does not occur when instead of multiplying by 4, we multiply with an odd square number like 9, that is 3 squared. Again, 9s is a regular sequence. But now, if we consider the sequence shifted by first 1 to 4 and then minus 1 to minus 4, we get no overlap whatsoever. Hence every number appears not more than once. Note that here we don't use the numbers from 1 to 4. Similarly, the problem with duplicate numbers does not happen when multiplying by any odd square number like 5 squared, which is 25, because there is no number in the exact middle of two consecutive multiples of 25. So we are doing great. By multiplying the sequence by 9 and then shifting it from minus 4 to 4, we have a bunch of new numbers packed in 9 regular sequences, where no number appears more than once. However, we would like to somehow link them together to get one continuous string. Also, we would need to include the numbers from 1 to 4 somewhere, as they are right now missing. If we could do that, we would truly have a way to get from one solution to the square sum problem to another. So let's try and start for instance with the 4. Then we could see that this last sequence ends with 77, so we might reverse and append it, as 4 plus 77 is 81, a square number. Next may be the first sequence, as 68 plus 76 is 144, a square number. But unfortunately, this is where our luck runs out. Even if we try longer, we can't do any better. So let's think like a true problem solver and figure out what the problem is and what we would need to do to fix it. Well, something that doesn't bother us is the order in which the numbers in between the sequences appear. For us, the only thing that matters are its endpoints to link them together. And to link these, well, if we had more numbers than just 1 to 4, we would have far more options. But the reason we had only 4 numbers was that we multiplied with 9 and shifted the numbers up to plus and minus 4. But we know we could just as easily have multiplied the sequence with 25. That way, we get more numbers for linking the sequences together. So let's start this time with this specific sequence. It uses all numbers from 1 to 35 and has 1 and 3 as endpoints, which might be easier for linking. So we multiply the sequence with 25 and now shift the sequence by 1, then by minus 1, on and on till minus 12 and plus 12. This way we capture all numbers from 13, which is 25 minus 12, to 887. Not included are the numbers from 1 to 12. But before we do anything further, let's abbreviate these 25 sequences to keep our sanity and just focus on how they are calculated and what their start and end is. In fact, let's even forget how they were calculated and just focus on their start and end. So we have those 25 sequences as well as the numbers from 1 to 12. As it turns out, it is now possible to construct a new sequence. First, we could start with 1. Then maybe the sequence shifted by minus 1, as 1 plus 24 equals 25, a square number. Next, this sequence. Now we might add the reverse of this sequence. Then the sequence multiplied by 25 without shifting, then maybe 11. Now the reverse of that, then 5, 4 and 12 and just all the rest. This way, we can indeed create a sequence involving all numbers from 1 to 887 and we make sure when joining sequences that the sums are always squares. So by taking our initial sequence s, we can get a new sequence by 1, shift 25s minus 1 and so on. A rule that looks like this. So what does the sequence we just created look like? Well, here it is. Maybe let's just align it differently to see what happened. First, in red we have the numbers from 1 to 12, that were used in between the different sequences. 
Next, the original sequence multiplied with 25 is here. Here it is shifted by 1 and I will also highlight all the sequences that were reversed. If you are bored and don't mind your eyes hurting, just check that this is indeed a sequence where consecutive numbers sum to squares and no number appears more than once. So this rule, this formula, takes our initial sequence S and creates a new regular sequence. Before, S had as large as number 35, so the new sequence has 25 times 35 plus 12, which is 887 as the largest number, where again the 35 is the previous largest number, the 25 comes from multiplying by 25, and the 12 from shifting up to plus and minus 12 to cover all numbers from one multiple of 25 to the next. So we started with a solution to the square sum problem with n equals 35, and now have an additional solution with n equals 887. However, do you already see what we can do next with this rule? Maybe this helps. Say we have some sequence and we know its first and last number. Then we obviously also know its first and last number when the sequence gets multiplied with some square number, as they also just get multiplied. Shifting is more difficult. You see, while the first entry can just be computed by simply adding that c, the last number gets either larger or smaller by c. This depends on whether the length of the sequence is divisible by 2 or not. When the length is a multiple of 2, we get minus c, otherwise plus c. Well, what I want you to appreciate is that we have full control of the start and end of a sequence, and that those are completely independent of all the numbers in between. So do you see what breakthrough we are about to achieve? This formula cannot only be used to extend this specific regular sequence, but rather any regular sequence that starts with 1, ends with 3, and has an odd length to have the same last numbers as our original sequence when shifting. One way to see that this is true is that while stitching together the shifted sequences, the length of the original sequence, which was 35, didn't play any role. As long as the shifted endpoints after multiplying with 25 are identical, this rule, this very same procedure, works. But this rule not only extends sequences that start with 1, end with 3, and have an odd length, but also produce sequences that start with 1, end with 3, and this new length is indeed always odd, as long as the initial n is odd. So nothing is stopping us from plugging this new sequence back into our formula. Now what numbers will be contained in the new sequence? Well, the new largest number is always the previous times 25 plus 12. So we started with a regular sequence that had 35 as largest number, then the next sequence had 887 as the largest number. So if we apply it again, we get a solution to the square sum problem with n equals 22,187. Do it again, we have a solution for n equals 554,687. And it's hard to stress what a breakthrough this idea is. Suddenly, by finding a simple recipe and a single starting sequence, we are able to show the existence of solutions to the square sum problem for infinitely many numbers. No further work needed. It does not matter how far you wander along the number line, you will at least occasionally stumble upon solutions and we know why that is, and also have a recipe for finding them. However, it is clear that we are far from done. Even though we can solve infinitely many numbers, there are more than enough that we can't handle. So one last insight is needed to cover all numbers, and unfortunately it's the hardest one to find. So how far are we from a total solution? Well, we are missing one key idea. Our previous machinery takes only one regular sequence and turns it into another. The key is that when you use a pair of related sequences, you can create new sequences of different lengths. However, this would then introduce a new problem, as we can't repeat that process. So, what we actually want is a way of extending pairs of related sequences to different pairs of related sequences, which we will then do again and again. To best introduce those related sequences, I'll just jump directly in Medias Res and define those related sequences, which I will call ninja pairs. For example, the following two sequences form a ninja pair. What makes them special? Four things. First, they are both regular sequences. No surprise so far. Second, the first sequence uses all numbers from 1 to some number n, while the second contains all numbers from 1 to n plus 1. In our case, n equals 41, so we will call it an ninja pair of length 41. The shorter sequence will always be called s for short, the longer l for long. Third, 
both sequences start with the number 1, and the sequence with an even length has 8 as final number, while the other ends in 3. This part is also not too surprising, as we already understand the importance of first and last numbers. Last, every number that appears in the first sequence in an even position also appears in the second in an even position, and similarly for numbers in odd positions. Look, if we color every other number in both sequences, every number that occurred red in the first sequence is also red in the second sequence. One might already guess that this has something to do with shifting the sequences. So those are the four criteria for two sequences to form a ninja pair. They are regular and use all numbers from 1 to n and n plus 1 respectively. They start with 1, end either with 3 or 8, depending if the length is a multiple of 2 or not, and have this property with odd and even positions. And why do we call them ninja pairs? For absolutely no reason other to make them sound exciting. So for now, let's just go with this definition, and especially that final point, which we will address later. As it turns out, one is now able to construct one ninja pair from another, much in the same way as before. However, this time we will not be multiplying with 25, but instead with 7 squared, so 49, which is the next biggest odd square number. Say we have two sequences that form a ninja pair, S and L, where again S is shorter by 1 and consists of the numbers from 1 to n. Then we can use a formula to get a ninja pair of length 49n plus 50. And even though there is not really a point in showing you the precise formula, as it suffices to know that it exists rather than its exact form, still, here it is. This is the way to construct a new ninja pair s new and l new. Actually, this very formula only works when n is odd. But don't worry, one can just as easily find a formula when n is even, so that's nothing to be concerned about. So the bonus is that we can now mix the first and second sequence to open up new possibilities. And here the last point of the ninja pairs is important. Take for instance these two sequences. Once 49s is shifted down by 11 and then 49l is shifted up by 11. If s and l were any arbitrary pair of sequences, it would be quite likely that there is a number that is contained in both of those shifted sequences, hence breaking our entire process. This is reminiscent of the problems we had earlier, that numbers can appear more than once after shifting. This is why we need our fourth condition on ninjas. It perfectly ensures that such repeated numbers cannot occur. That's the reason we not only want that fourth property, but rather are forced to use it. However, there are more formulas for extending ninja pairs than just this one. In fact, there is one that constructs a ninja pair of length 49n plus 24, when given a pair of length n. Similar for 49n plus 25, 49n plus 26, on and on till 49n plus 72. Again, always with a different version for odd and even n. In total, this collection consists of 49 different ways of getting new ninja pairs from a single starting pair, which already feels like we are close to actually solving the square sum problem. Now, even though the definition of ninja sequences is quite constrained, they are still quite abundant. True, when n is small, they just don't exist. However, we saw that for 41 a pair exists, and more importantly, for n equals 99, 100, up to 4900, there always exist ninja pairs, which can be checked by a computer. But what about 4901? Well, it can be written as 49 times 99 plus 50. There exists a ninja pair with n equals 99, and we know how to extend it by 49n plus 50, so there has to be a ninja pair with n equals 4901. Similarly, we know how to extend that sequence by 49n plus 51, so a 4902 ninja pair exists as well. In total, the solution for n equals 99 can be used for creating ninja pairs up to 4923. However, 4924 is not a problem at all, as we can take the solution with n equals 100 and get 4924. Each initial solution can be used to create 49 new ninja pairs using our collection of 49 formulas, at which point the next ninja pair can take over to create the following 49 ninja pairs. So this procedure goes on and on, as every new pair can be constructed from an already existing ninja pair, and the chain cannot break. And just like that, for every n from 99, there exists a ninja pair of length n. And as this pair consists of regular sequences, the square sum problem is solved for n greater than 99. This is how to solve Matt Parker's square sum problem. For small n, sometimes solution exists, sometimes they don't. 
Then from 25 to 99, there is always a solution. From 99 to 4900, the computer even finds ninja pairs. And from then on, we can one by one construct for every additional number a ninja pair, to ensure that the sequence of ninja pairs does not end. This very proof was posted online, together with a file including all those initial ninja pairs and formulas to extend them, as well as a program that verifies that they indeed are valid solutions. I certainly skipped over some details, however, it is safe to leave them out of a video, as they don't offer any additional insights. There is only one worthy of being pointed out, which is why we took the numbers 3 and 8 as endpoints. Well, if you have a regular sequence that starts with 1 and either ends with 3 or 8, you can connect its start and end, as they also sum to a square number, resulting in an even prettier animation. Thereby, our method not only generates regular sequences, but rather regular cycles. And, as it turns out, such regular cycles always exist when n is greater than 31. So I hope I showed that virtually every step can be motivated by precisely pinning down where current problems are and then thinking about ways to circumvent them. It was those little insights that got us closer and closer to the complete proof, even though the actual formulas for extending ninja pairs did come from a computer and are quite impossible to find by hand, they were not what made our approach work. It was our reasoning that helped us to understand what rules or formulas we need. The computer simply did the dirty work by crunching the numbers and actually finding them.